Fishes are not only important sources of food for people, they're also key engineers in marine ecosystems, potentially reducing establishment of invasive species and maintaining desirable habitats like reefs and seagrass meadows in the face of overgrowth by algae. Although the ecological importance of so-called top-down control by predators is widely appreciated, it has not been measured systematically across a range of sites in marine waters. One promising approach developed by the Smithsonian's Marine Geo Project is to create a global data set of top-down control involving exposure of standardized prey in different environments or conditions and comparing the rate of loss to predators. This assay, called a squid pop, is designed to be simple, economical, and scientifically rigorous to ensure that it is accessible to a wide range of users, including students and citizen scientists. This video will show you how to construct, deploy, and record data from your own squid pops so that you can contribute to a growing global data set of top-down processes. To make a set of squid pops, you will need the following items. 25 fiberglass plant stakes between 30 and 50 centimeters in length. You can purchase them in longer sizes and cut them to the desired length. They may come in different colors and that is acceptable as long as you do not use any white, brightly colored, or fluorescent stakes. A roll of black electrical tape. Four pound fishing line or equivalent. A sewing needle or other thin sharp implement. Scissors. A 1.3 centimeter diameter cork punch. A package of dried squid mantle. You can find dried squid mantle at many Asian grocery stores, as well as from online vendors. All the materials for squid pops can be found online or in shops in your local area. Collect all your materials. Making squid pops tends to go faster if you arrange it in a production line style. That is, each step is completed for all 25 squid pops before moving on to the next step. If you have helpers, you can assign one person to each step. Begin by cutting out 25 circles of squid mantle with your cork punch. If you're unable to find a 1.3 centimeter diameter cork punch, you can also cut the mantle into one by one centimeter squares. Just be sure to note that you cut them into squares when you record your data. Try to avoid the center line of the mantle, as this is where the squid's pen is located. Punching through the pen tends to result in thicker pieces of squid that separate easily. Next, string the 25 squid pieces onto your fishing line. It's best to puncture the squid slightly off-center from the middle. If you don't have a sewing needle, you can also poke a hole through the squid with a tack and thread the line through by hand. This results in a necklace of squid pieces. You will now tie off the squid pieces one at a time and cut them from the line. Pull one piece toward the end and use a fishing hook knot with 10 twists or similar knot to secure the piece on the line. You can then cut the piece away from the rest of the strung squid pieces. You want to leave at least five centimeters of line dangling from the squid piece so you can attach it to the garden stake. Once all the pieces are tied off, cut 25 pieces of electrical tape in roughly 10 centimeter lengths. Mm -hmm. 
Now you will affix the squid to the stake. Hold the line against the end of the stake and wrap the electrical tape around it, tucking in any excess line that may stick out. You want approximately one centimeter of line, but no more, between the piece of squid and stake. This prevents tangling of the squid pop, but allows the squid piece to move in the current. Once you have all 25 complete, you're ready to deploy. Squid pops are placed in the substrate in a location where they will always be submerged and checked for consumption after one hour and 24 hours. You will keep track of all your results on a datasheet that contains the following information. Your full name. The decimal degrees GPS location you deployed the squid pops. This can be found with either a handheld GPS unit or by using software such as Google Earth to find the coordinates of your location after you deploy. The date and time the squid pops were deployed. The type of habitat you deployed in, for example, mudflat or rocky reef. The total number of squid pops deployed. The number of squid pops eaten after one hour. The total number of squid pop steaks recovered after 24 hours the number of squid pops eaten after 24 hours, and any additional notes you wish to add. When putting out squid pops in the field, try to place approximately two meters between each stake. They can be laid out in any linear arrangement that is best suited to the habitat you are working in. However, it is important that all squid pops in a single deployment are within the same type of habitat, coral reef or seagrass, for example, and at generally the same depth. If you approach very close to another habitat type, or deploy over a depth gradient of more than 2 meters, be sure to note it on your datasheet. Now you will leave your squid pops to sit for one hour. Leave the immediate vicinity to prevent disruption of the fish consumers that you are targeting. After one hour, return and count how many pieces of squid have been lost. A squid pop is considered consumed if 51% of it is missing. Otherwise, it is still counted as present. Record the number missing on your datasheet. It is best to leave all stakes in place, even if the squid has been detached, so there will be no confusion later as to how many stakes were deployed. Now leave the squid pops to soak for an additional 23 hours for a total of 24 hours in the water. After 24 hours, return and count the number of squid pops that have been consumed. Record this number on your datasheet and collect all the stakes. You have now collected data for a complete deployment of squid pops. Send the data to Marine Geo at bitemap.wordpress.com forward slash data or email it to us at marinegeo at si.edu. Your data will be added to a global open access database to provide a detailed map of top-down processes in coastal waters. Check back at the Marine Geo website for updates.